All right, so today I want to talk a little bit about the medium format film camera I've been shooting with for the past few months or so, and that is the Bronica SQA. It's a really interesting camera and I really like it a lot, so I want to share some of my thoughts about the camera, some of the interesting features about this camera, and share some thoughts about who I think this camera is built for, who should buy it, who should consider it, and what to think about when you are looking for this camera as well, because they're getting rarer and more and more scarce. So let's go ahead and start with why I bought this camera and what led me into medium format. I was shooting 35mm film before and digital as usual, but I always felt like I needed something more. I felt like 35mm wasn't enough and the negative size was a little too small for my taste. And so that naturally led me into thinking about medium format film as well. But there's a lot of medium format film cameras and it didn't have to be the Bronica SQA. The reason why I was interested was because I was interested in the square format a lot. I really liked the square format when I was editing my digital photos. I thought there was a unique symmetry to it and it just felt kind of right. It felt like it would be fun to shoot a camera that could only shoot square, you know what I mean? So that led me to think about the 6x6 format. And naturally, when you're thinking about the 6x6 format, you are going to be drawn into the Hasselblads. The Hasselblads are really, really good cameras, and they create beautiful images, and they're just a little bit too expensive, however. So I was kind of hopping around looking for an alternative that I could find that did something similar, but it was also really well built. So the Zenza Bronica is kind of a Japanese version of the Hasselblad, but it's not really a knockoff. I think it has its own kind of style and aesthetic to it that I really like, and it creates some really beautiful and amazing images. So there are a lot of variants such as the SQ, the SQAI, the SQB and whatnot. The one I have right now is the SQA because I looked at the differences between some of the cameras and some of them didn't really matter to me as much and some did a little bit more. So I think the SQA was perfect for me. I kind of forget the differences so don't expect a run through right now but yeah. Something I also wanted when I was searching for a camera was the waist level viewfinder and that is something the Hasselblad cameras and the Zenza Bronica cameras have that I thought would be really fun. It just makes more sense to be shooting square from a waist level finder. These cameras and other cameras of the like have prism level viewfinders as well and so that allows you to kind of turn the camera, shoot from your eye, but I just thought those would fit better with a different format such as 645, 6x7, 6x9. If I was only shooting square anyways, it would make sense to have a waist level viewfinder because if I was shooting square with a prism level viewfinder, then switching from portrait to landscape doesn't really change that much, you know what I mean? I also found the prism level viewfinders to be a little bulkier. The waist level viewfinders kind of compress down, you can close them, but the prism level viewfinders you kind of are stuck with that and it kind of take up a big space in my bag so that's what kind of led me to a waist level viewfinder instead. So let's go ahead and move on to the features and kinks of this camera because I think there's a lot of interesting things. I already mentioned the viewfinders. For a square format, waist level viewfinder is perfect in my opinion. Something I really like about this camera is that it's really well built. I think it's an all metal construction or a mostly metal construction. It's got nice leather as well, but I think it's not a cheap version of the Hasselblad. If that's what you were thinking about this camera, it's really well built, it's really fun to use, and it looks like I'm using a solid level of equipment. It's also got a lot of manual dials and manual cranks as well, which I think is really fun because that's what we kind of really like when we're shooting film. We like the whole manual aspect of it. It feels like I'm creating a picture when I'm turning the crank, pressing the button, etc., etc., rather than just you know, letting the camera kind of do the work for me, which is what I kind of expect when I'm shooting digital instead. But I, if you're looking for a manual experience, then the Bronica SQA is really nice for that. Something that's interesting about the viewfinder for this camera as well is that it's got a push down viewfinder. So you'll notice you can see the box right here, but if I press this button right here, you can actually get your eye close up to this little circular viewfinder that allows you to focus more precisely, which is really cool. And it, it has helped when I couldn't tell whether my subject was in focus or not. Something you'll notice about this camera, however, is that it's actually an inverted viewfinder. So when you're trying to compose an image, if you turn right, the image is actually gonna turn left and up and down and vice versa, etc. So this can be kind of weird and a little hard to get used to at first, but once you're used to it, it's actually kind of fun composing images with an inverted viewfinder. I thought it was weird at first, but I'm slowly, slowly getting used to it and it's starting to be a bit more pleasurable when I'm taking this camera out. A cool thing about this camera as well is that it's very modular, so you can switch out normally, you know, the viewfinder if you wanted to. You can switch out the lenses, but it, you can also switch out the film backs as well. So if I was shooting, say, with Portra 400 or something like that, and I wanted to change and shoot black and white in the middle of a roll, I could have another film back and switch the backs like that. 
and continue shooting like that. I don't have another film bag right now. I only have this one, but I plan on investing in another normal colored film bag that will be black so it can kind of color code for what film I'm using. So I'll use the brown one when I'm shooting color and the black one when I'm shooting black and white. And I think that will help with the process a lot more as well. So those are some of the interesting features and kinks about this camera. There's a lot more, but I'm not gonna get into all of that right now. We're gonna move on to the shooting experience, how it's been shooting six by six with this camera. What I found interesting about when using this camera is that the shooting experience is very different. This camera is very bulky compared to a lot of the cameras I've been using. So it forces me to be, be a bit more methodical and it forces me to kind of shoot different images if that makes any sense. I can't be shooting a lot of street images with this camera like I would be with the Fujifilm X100V because it's just way too noticeable. People can obviously tell when you have a camera of this size and you're walking around that you're taking pictures and whatnot. I can't be very stealthy with this camera. It's not like a point and shoot either. And just the whole experience of manual focus and the inverted viewfinder really forces you to slow down and compose your shot. You get about 12 shots per roll with this camera so you got to make each shot count as well because each one is burning a good amount of money, especially with developing and scanning and all that stuff. So I've noticed when I'm shooting with this camera, I take my time a lot more and I'm really focused on nailing each shot as well. Also, the images that I'm taking are a little different. I noticed I really like using this camera for portraits. I have the 80 millimeter F2 lens right here and I wanna invest in the 150 millimeter lens for future uses. But I noticed portraits are really fun because then you're interacting with someone and they are kind of posing for you. So it works with the kind of slowed down experiment. It's not so good for street photography, like I mentioned, because you can't be as quick as you would be with other cameras. It's harder to get candid photo shots that I've noticed with this camera, which is why I'm thinking about getting the 150 millimeter lens because it'll allow me to kind of shoot from afar so I can uh, be a little less noticeable, you know. This camera also really works well for landscapes because my subject isn't really moving as well. So I can take my time to compose the shot and then really get a good shot out of it, whether I'm using a tripod or if I'm doing handheld stuff. So this camera is a little difficult to use because personally, I'm not so much used to slowing down, which is why I kind of bought this camera because it would force me to slow down a lot more. But each shot you get with this camera, it's very satisfying. There's a whole experience when you're nailing a shot and when you're just getting it. You know what I mean? So that is something I could say that I really like about this camera as well. It's forcing me to change my shooting experience a little bit more. I'm shooting a lot less photos, which means there's gonna be a lot less editing involved when I'm converting negatives and whatnot. And overall, I think most of the images that I get with this camera are really good because it forces me to slow down and take less useless pictures, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much what I can say for the shooting experience of six by six with this camera. I really like it and I'm looking forward to shooting a lot more with it. Next thing I wanna talk about is image quality and kind of my thoughts on moving up to medium format film, if it was worth it, if it was really different from 35 millimeter. And so far I can say that yes, it is. I think with 35 millimeters, point and shoot cameras, I was just taking way too many images. And a lot of the images I wasn't really too fond of. Does that make sense? It felt like a good transition from digital to film, but it wasn't entirely what I wanted. So I'm thinking about perhaps getting a medium format point and shoot camera for future use because then I'll be able to shoot more images, but then I'll also be able to shoot portrait and landscape orientation. But as far as this camera goes, the image quality is really, really good. I honestly can't complain too much. I can't compare it to Hasselblad because I've never shot Hasselblad, but the images that come out of this camera are very substantial and I really like how it looks. In terms of resolutions and scans and whatnot, I scan with the Fujifilm X-T4 and a macro lens. And when I'm scanning this image, because the X-T4, its max resolution is in a three by two aspect ratio, I actually have to crop when I'm scanning a square image that comes out of the Bronica SQA. I know a lot of people like to do panorama stitching when they are scanning square format. Personally, I don't like it because sometimes the software gets it wrong, it kind of messes up the image. And then I'm also taking more images just to get one scan. I'd rather just crop in, but then the problem is you'd get a slightly lower resolution when you were cropping in. So I have little mixed feelings about it. I can't get the full resolution like this, but to be honest, for what I'm using the images for, the image quality of the scans is sufficient and it'll get me a pretty decent print size as well. So I can't complain about it too much. If you're curious about why this matters, it's because scanning 35 millimeter film with this setup will fill up the entire frame on the Fujifilm X-T4. So there's no wasted resolution per se, but scanning a square image, you're gonna have to crop and then you're kind of losing pixels here and there. And 
that kind of lowers the overall maximum capacity of what you could be scanning. So that's the whole debacle. I just try not to worry about it too much because it doesn't really matter that much. I think the amount of resolution that I'm able to scan with this setup is sufficient for my purposes. So I do think the image quality between medium format and 35 millimeter is relatively substantial. I've noticed the difference and I do say I would, I prefer medium format. Moving on. So I want to give some tips on what to look for and what to think about when you are buying this camera. If you are curious, yes, this camera is a limited edition or the version I have. I don't think there were too many made, but I bought it off of eBay from a seller in Japan. And the reason why I bought the limited edition is because for the Zenza Bronicas, the price is only increasing because they don't make these cameras anymore and the cameras that are on the market are very old and they're slowly, slowly deteriorating in quality. So finding a good condition one at a reasonable price is very hard. I think only a few years ago, these cameras were only a few hundred of bucks, but the one I got right now cost me about a thousand dollars and that's kind of expensive, right? I know what you're thinking, but the reason why I went with a limited edition one is because I figured it would have been better taken care of. The quality would have been better than a lot of other cameras. And I was looking at the other Zenza Bronicas on the market and the ones that were of the same condition or same quality costed about the same but they weren't the limited edition version. So I was like, okay, what the heck? I might as well just get this one as well because it seems to be well taken care of. It seems to be of a high quality and I want a camera that is going to last at least a few years, maybe up to five or 10 years, even longer and whatnot. So I figured it would be worth it. And that is, I think I made the right decision because I don't think I'd ever sell this camera. This camera is really unique. It's really interesting. It's really fun to use. And I think I would use it for a lot of stuff in the future. So I'm kind of glad I made the investment that I did. So personally, I would recommend if you're looking for this camera to spend a little extra for a better condition one because they're only getting harder to find and you want something like this camera to be something that'll last. The kind of sad thing would be if you're buying one of these cameras and then it kind of breaks on you within a year or two and then you just kind of wasted your money and it would cost as much as it did to buy a new one to repair the old one because people who can repair these cameras are getting more and more scarce as well. So I would just recommend investing in a better quality one than to have to deal with the low quality, cheaper prices, but also worse condition cameras. Let's get on to some closing thoughts. Overall, I really, really like the Bronica SQA. I'm going to be shooting a lot more film with it. It's been a lot of fun because it's been changing the way I shoot. I've been more methodical on my shots and I've slowly been leaking that into my digital images as well to be a little more methodical and to stop shooting so many useless pictures, which is something I really like about the shooting experience of the Bronica. Every shot counts and when you're thinking about that, most of the shots you get will be fairly decent or pretty good, which is a little more liberating than I don't always have to think about taking a picture of everything. If that's the case, then I should only have maybe 16 or 12 shots per roll. And I think that would work better in my personal workflow as well. So as you can tell, this camera is a very specific camera. It might not suit all your guys' needs. It's very specific to a certain type of shooting. And I would only recommend it if it feels like it would fit in with your workflow and what you like in a camera. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll try and help and clear up some stuff. I know this video is kind of everywhere, but that's just kind of how it tends to be with my videos. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try and get back to you. Let me know what your experience has been shooting with this camera. If you own any of the Bronica SQ series, what you like about it, etc, etc. I'm curious to see your guys' thoughts. And if you like this video, please like the video, subscribe to this channel for more photography stuff. I'll be shooting a lot more film and digital in the future and sharing with you guys a lot more print stuff as well. But yeah, Thank you guys as always for watching. Take care, happy shooting, and I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.